All right, so we like to begin in Matthew 16. Matthew 16, all praises to the Most High, Christ. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. All right, so we get into this topic pertaining to the second coming of our Lord in his glory. Okay, Matthew 16. Matthew 16, that's where we'll begin. So when we're dealing with the second coming of the Lord, there is no third coming, fourth coming, fifth coming. It's called the second coming. The return of the Lord. They don't have, um, when you look at return, they don't have an S plural of, in a plural form. Returns. It's coming back. And that's when man is going to receive his rewards. Okay? So that's what this topic is about. The second coming of the Lord in his glory. Christ come back, there's no rapture. That's not in the scriptures. There's no Christ getting the wicked Israelites and the righteous Israelites taking them to some wilderness. And now that's where Israel going to be proved. That's not in the scriptures. Therefore, you might as well say, well, Israel can do anything. They're going to be delivered anyway and then get to the wilderness. And then, oh, we're dealing with Christ. Let me straighten up. That's, that's false. That's a false doctrine. You see? So we got to repent, Israel, and come out of these false doctrines. We got to get that leaven up out of us. Okay, and learn the apostles' doctrine. So we had Matthew 16, all praises. So this is Christ speaking. So who are we going to hear, Christ or man in these religions? Christ. Christ. That's what we all should be here for, to hear Christ. What Christ got to say? So Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man shall come. So Christ right here is talking to his disciples. And he said, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. So Christ is telling the disciples that he's going to come back in the glory of who? His Father. His Father. Because Christ have a Father, the Most High. Christ serves the Most High. He's the Son of the Most High. When the disciples asked Christ to teach us how to pray, what's the Lord's Prayer all about, Israel? What did he say? Our Father. Our Father, what was Christ at when he was teaching them how to pray? On earth. On earth. And he said, Our Father, what? Which art in heaven. So what would be the location of his Father be? In the heaven. Okay, that's in the prayer. In the prayer. <laughs> See, so we got to slow down and pick up on words. <laughs> right? Right. Say, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. So when Christ come back, he coming with what? His angels. His angels. And is that not going to be some secret coming? It's going to be a special event. There's no silent coming where Christ gets to church, take them off to heaven somewhere, <coughs> then he, he, he's waiting, then he comes back with the church. That's religion. That's religion. Christ is talking about, about a, a second coming. That's what he's talking about. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And what? And then. So you want to highlight, underline, and then. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. That's a blockbuster right there. Because Christ bring it out. When he come back, when is man going to be rewarded? When is Abraham going to be rewarded? Isaac, Jacob, the wives. At his second coming. When is the wicked going to be rewarded? At his second coming. At his second coming. There's no man being wicked goes in the earth. And then this man, he, he, somehow he could talk to Abraham. Because... Somebody's in Abraham's bosom. Where's Sarah at? 
Then Abraham talking to him. <laughs> Abraham, the scriptures say when he died, he got buried. He went to went with, to, with his people in the earth. Buried. Right with Sarah, right? So the people getting crossed up in Luke 16, thinking about hell underground and people getting poked with a fork. We still looking for that scripture, by the way. We're Satan poking people with a fork, pitchfork. Is that in here? Nope. See, we still looking. Just like we still looking for the apple that Adam and Eve ate. You see? So Christ going to reward every man at his second coming. Hold that. Go to Matthew 25. And one, and 31. There's only one second coming. Matthew 25. We're in the same book. And 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, it's the same thing, right? Right. And all his holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. So when Christ come back, judgment day, he gonna sit on David's throne, right or wrong? Right. What was David's throne at? On earth. On earth. Right? Now go to Now go to Hebrews 9. Hebrews the ninth chapter. So we got two scriptures so thus far about the second coming of Christ. And and what and, and What's going to happen at his second coming? It's going to be judgment day. This is when the dead are going to be resurrected. So there's a judgment day to come, Israel. So Hebrews 9, let me get it. Hebrews 9 and 24. It says, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth. So at one point in time in our history, we had the portable tabernacle when we was in the wilderness. And also we had temples being built. Starting with Solomon, he built the temple. But those are all foreshadows of the true tabernacle, which is called the heavens. That's what Christ is at. He's going to tell us. But into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of who? Of God. Of God. For us. For us. So who is Christ in the presence of? The Most High. All right. Two. Christ being our high priest. <clears throat> right or wrong? Right. Or is the Most High high priest? Christ. All right then. So it got to be stay two different beings. We got a high priest <coughs> who takes orders from the Most High. We have to know all this information. See? It's right here in the book for us. Right here. Now see, but we've been indoctrinated so tough, it's hard to, for, for a lot of our people to shake that teaching, man. <laughs> see? So let's read on. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. So when would the high priest enter into the holiest of holies with the blood of animals? That's the blood of others. On what day? Paul, go ahead, brother. The day of atonement. Exactly. Exactly. So Christ is our atonement. But now in verse 26 says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the what? End of the world. That's powerful. When did Christ suffer? 
in the end of the world. Okay, so who was ruling when Christ suffered he on the cross? Romans. The Romans. So if you know who the Romans are and they raced it, you'll know who Edom is. Because Esau, according to the scriptures, is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Esau, the so-called European. Whether he's British, Spaniard, Portuguese, French, Dutch. <laughs> so it's letting us know when Christ suffered, it was the last days. It is also called the end of the world. Right there in the verse. <laughs> Now, how many times Christ suffered? Once. One time for us on that cross at the hands of the Romans. And a lot of our people, the so-called our rulers, chief priests and all that was in on it. But that was according to prophecy. You can read about that in Psalms, the second chapter. Let's read it again. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Christ died for our sins, and he suffered once. See, under the fourth empire, the fourth kingdom. Okay? And that's, we still in that fourth empire. So we got to get all this information so we can repent and get up all out of here <laughs> at Christ's second coming. Verse 27, it said, And as it is appointed unto men, what did it say? Once. Once. Once to die. But after this, the judgment. Capital J. So what is Paul talking about? Go ahead, Yahweh Dah. Paul's talking about how man dies once, and then after that is the judgment, meaning the judgment day. Mm -hmm. The second coming of Christ, which is called judgment day. So there's no reincarnation. See? You, you coming back every third and fourth generation. You your grandfather. You your great grandfather. See? That was taught to us. Bugged out doctrine. See? <laughs> Bugged out doctrine. Devil doctrine. Now people get mad we say devil doctrine. The scriptures talk about devil doctrine. Yep. Scriptures talk about seducing spirits. So we try to warn our people to eat these, these, these doctrines alone. Because you can be seduced. So when people tell me, don't talk about my elders doctrine all that, they being seduced. There's a such thing as seducing spirits. We read it in, in, in Timothy. You say, where are all these questions coming from? All this, somebody gets seduced. See? What are we entertaining on the side getting seduced? Seducing spirits. And them spirits be pulling. And we keep messing with them. And they'll get us <laughs> a matter of time. Remember, Satan's a roaring lion. As he walks as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, where do lions roam at? Underground? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. See? Satan be on this earth, troubling man, getting man in trouble with the Lord. So that's cold right there, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear to what? The second time. The second time. Without sin unto what? Salvation. Salvation. So we're supposed to be looking for Christ's second coming. Not third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Mm -hmm. That ain't in there. So before he come, we're supposed to be repenting. Focusing on basic things. How do we get right with the Lord? That's it. See? We got to get this right. 
We got to get we got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. <laughs> That's what the scriptures say. See? So let's get another one. Hebrews the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10 and 11 says, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, me animal sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, speaking about Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of who? God. God, Father. So Paul's bringing out Psalms 110 and 1. So where is Christ at? As our high priest in the heavens at the right hand side of the Father. In the presence of God the Father. Verse 13, here's the point. From henceforth, what does henceforth mean? No, no. From this time forth. From this time forth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. What is Paul alluding to there? The second coming. That's right. So when Christ come back, he's going to destroy his enemies. These nations. And wicked Israelites that refuse to repent. You see? So if you notice, the apostles are already always stressing the second coming, the second coming, right? And that's what we stress. What did the angels tell the disciples when they was gazing up at Christ when he went up to the heavens. Angels came and got him, took him up in the clouds, he went up. What did the angels confirm? What did they say? Go ahead, bro. Same way he was sitting, the same way he was coming back. So what were they talking about? Second coming. The angels said it. That's in Acts 1. <laughs> See? We can cover some millennium stuff and Stop that, man. It'll come out if the Lord wanted to come out. Well, you know, thousand year rain and thousand year this and then the rapture and this and that. You'd be like, are you serious? And we can't understand repentance. See, we be having it backwards. Right? <laughs> we supposed to be concerned. How can we escape the destruction? When he, comes. when he comes. Peter said in 2 Peter 3, he coming as a thief in the night. So when he come, he bringing the fire. The destruction. There ain't no ICBM missiles hitting nowhere. Got Israel talking about flee Babylon. Some GOCC group. Well, all this foolishness. Okay, flee Babylon, let's go to Canada. Why we gotta follow this brother to Syria somewhere. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and we falling for it. Brother walk around and there he go. And they span his sisters, fanning himself off and all this stuff. Exalt man. That's coming with a false doctrine. And we call out the groups. Said times you gotta do it. So how do we know about who the Pharisees and the Sadducees were? <laughs> Did the Bible call them out? Yep. yep. Okay. It's in here. Israel get offended real quick and touched real quick, emotional. See? We got we to gotta see it how the Lord see it, man. <laughs> we got to see it like that. It's serious. 1 Corinthians 15. So notice these basic scriptures, but they powerful. Powerful scriptures. These apostles, man, had the Holy Spirit. They had the Spirit of the Most High Christ in them. So this is 1 Corinthians 15, 22. It says, for as in Adam all die, even so, meaning in the same way, in Christ shall all be made alive. So what does Paul allude to there when he's speaking to these Israelites in Corinth? 
What is he alluding to? Verse 22. Verse 22. For as, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead, Z. For as in Adam all die, meaning what he did, what Adam did, brought sin upon the earth, and sin bring up death. It says, <clears throat> even so in Christ shall all be made alive, meaning that second coming, the ones who die, you know, in this life will be risen again in order to keep the commandments of Christ. Right. So he's talking about the resurrection. When is this going to happen? But every man in his own order. So there's an order to this. Christ the first fruits. So Christ was the one who, was, who died, deceased, put in the earth, was in the earth for three days and three nights, and it was the Most High who resurrected his son to live eternally. Thus Christ being the first fruits of the resurrection. You understand? Afterward, they that are crisis at his what? Coming. coming. Did it say comings? Coming singular. Coming singular. So when Christ comes back, what is he going to do? Stay. Stay and resurrect the what? Yeah. The dead. That's when Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them going to receive the rewards of immortality, the kingdom of heaven. That's what Abraham them knew about. That's why they lived the way they lived. They lived their life the way they lived it, in righteousness. They knew about Christ's second coming. What, what did Jude say Enoch prophesied about? The second coming. The second coming of Christ. Enoch was before the flood. Seven. See? <laughs> so that's heavy. So when, at Christ's second coming, what did the next verse say? It says, then, then, that's what you want to underline, then cometh the end. So Paul I ain't talking about three and four comings. See? Then, see, we read it too quick. Then cometh the end of the blue show. Slow down. Then cometh the end. When? He shall deliver up the kingdom to God. That's the church. See? That's right. Even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. So it's Christ coming back and taking down all these ki this, this kingdom here. It's gone. It's gone. See? For he must reign. So Christ is reigning at the right hand of the Father, having all power and authority given unto him. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. Sound familiar? Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Where else will we go to get the, the, that information? Uh, Hebrews, 10. Hebrews 10. So it's the same, it's the same thing right there. All praises. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is what? Death. Yeah. Death. What is Paul alluding to there? Go ahead, Jess. That's right. Where Israel, that elect, right with the righteous, they're going to get immortality. There's going to be no more sin. You see? Where Israel breaking commandments, nah. This is when that elect going to be rewarded with immortality. Because he says, he says it in this chapter. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So he's talking to the elect. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So in other words, something has to change within our bodies, right? These, these bodies has to go. Behold, I show you a mystery. So what is a mystery? Something hidden. Something hidden. Something that a lot of people wouldn't understand and see. We, Paul in there, shall not all sleep. So what is death called? Asleep. It would say rest in peace. 
philosophy. Death is called a sleep. The spirit is taken from the body and is at rest. Again, there's nobody burning underground. There's no screaming underground and all this other stuff. Hold that. Go to uh, Psalms. 31. A lot of our people believe in that doctrine. That when you die, you end up you're burning in flames, screaming. <laughs> this is the same brother, them groups, he talking about, according to Second Ezra 7, you know, when you got that one path you walk down. Yeah. And on, on one side is fire. fire and the other side is water. Right. He said that other side, that fire, that's the hell. See the underworld. So he got busted. No. So he said the underworld, that means the path we supposed to be walking, brothers and sisters, under the ground. <laughs> no. He just got busted. And it was a similitude that the angel was giving Ezra. <laughs> See, so that... Again, foolishness. They're coming with some academy with fake Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Charging the people 150 a pop. Mm -hmm. It probably went up, the brother is saying. See? And they come with the same phony black image of Christ. That's right. It ain't got the nations amongst them. See? We have to repent, man. So this is Psalms 31, 17. Say, let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the what? Grave. So is the wicked, are they screaming in, 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 what, in the grave, underground? No. They talking? Psalms 31, 17. Yeah. Are they talking? Hey, Abraham, uh, tell Lazarus to um, throw me a little water down here. It's hot. <laughs> Let me cool off my tongue. But your body's on fire. Why the tongue? <laughs> Cool off your tongue. When you want your whole body drenched with water? <laughs> See? So we're at 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When? In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that's when Christ come back. Right or wrong? That's right. Because in the chapter, remember we just read that when Christ come back, <laughs> after when He come back, then shall it come to end? Mm -hmm. And He is talking about He will make all alive in the in this chapter. Right. So that last trump got to be at Christ's second coming, right? Yep. It says, For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal yeah, must put on immortality. immortality. That's what we seek it. Eternal life. So it says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. This is in Isaiah. Death is swallowed up in victory. You see that? That's cold-blooded. See? So we talking about getting immortality, immortality at at Christ's second coming. That's what we talking about. That's what the apostles taught, right? 
So that's what we all supposed to teach, the same thing. We start detouring and start talking about reincarnation and all this other stuff, and we, we doing our own thing, got our own agenda, and we get in trouble for that. Like a lot of groups doing, pushing reincarnation, telling you you can't say Christ, the word Christ, when Christ means Messiah or the anointing. You see? And these brothers, that's another group, GMS, they talking about, <laughs> they for, yeah, how is shy? Yeah, okay. They talking about raping women. You serious? The, the minute a girl on her cycle, she can be raped. <laughs> Christ said, call no man rabbi, right? But one is your master. Then he said, call no man your father. He wasn't talking about your actual father. But he said, honor father and mother. These are the same guys going to promote and say, well, Rabbi Bibbins, Abba Bibbins, what does Abba mean? Uh, See? But yet they get on brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church, which is wrong. Why are you talking about the Pope? What does Pope mean, Father? Come on. <laughs> They're going to say, Rabbi Bivens and all that is Elijah or John the Baptist. False teaching. False teachings. See? It's all praises. We seeing that at Christ's second coming, there's <laughs> gonna be a resurrection, man. We either get immortality or damnation. Let's go back to Matthew 16. Matthew 16 and 27. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here. So as Christ was speaking, you had his disciples around, right? Right. He said, some of you that's standing here, we shall not taste the death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Right? Right. So right there, the Israelites, a lot of them going to say, see, that's talking about reincarnation. Nope. Christ said, there'll be some of you standing here that's not going to taste death till you see the kingdom of heaven, right? The Son of Man coming in the what? In, in his, his kingdom. kingdom. So we keep reading what we're going to do. We got to get into it. What does Christ mean? So the 17th chapter, the first verse, it says, that After six days, Yahushai taketh Peter, James, and John. They're your son. Those three. He didn't take all his disciples with him in this event right here. And John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, meaning away from the rest of the disciples. So they're on a high mountain and was transfigured before them. So what happened before Peter, James, and John's eyes? He changed before their eyes. He changed before them. They seen Christ's majesty. How he's going to appear when he comes in his second coming and sit on the throne of David. You see? That's what he was alluding to in that 28th verse in chapter 16. It said, his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. So hold that. Go to Luke. Luke 9. So Christ is showing them his glory. So not only did he, his, his, his appearance change, but did his clothing change? Yeah. Yeah. Luke 9, 28. 
Same account. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. To pray to who? Himself? <laughs> Brother, he teaches the Christ. Yeah, he be praying to himself. <laughs> that makes no sense. As if we got a bugged out Savior, man. So let's read on. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. That's what transfigured means, or change, the brother said. And his raiment was white and what? Listerine. See that? So they see in his majesty, man, his glory. How he's going to look at his second coming. That's what we're talking about. The second coming of our Lord in his glory. That's the topic. <laughs> Verse 30, and behold, there talked with him two men, which was Moses and Elijah. Mm. So these brothers, Peter, James, and John, are seeing a vision. Christ is showing them a powerful vision. We'll get it when we get back to Matthew 6, uh, 17. So who's there? Who, who is Peter seeing? Moses and Elijah, two great prophets. Who appeared in what? Glory. In glory. <coughs> so Elijah and Moses in the kingdom, are they going to receive glorious bodies? Yeah. Oh, that's right. This is what Moses them knew about. Elijah knew about immortality. They knew about the second coming of Christ. That's in Deuteronomy 18. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the second coming of Christ is all throughout the Bible, man. What is this? Three, four, five, six, seven <laughs> comings. <laughs> Verse 31. Who appeared in glory and spake of his what? Decease. Decease. Which what does decease come? mean? It's death. And some people, did Christ really actually die? What does decease mean? Yeah. Okay. Highlight that. <laughs> Spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at where? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Because he's our Passover lamb. That sacrificial lamb. Did we have to kill it? Did we have to actually kill the lamb? Yes. yes. Okay. In Jerusalem. See? So Christ actually died and was buried for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So now let's go back to Matthew 17. All praises. In three. It said, Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. So what were they talking about, right? What was Moses and Christ and Elijah talking about? Hmm? Christ said coming? Who, who in agreement with that? Come on, Choo Choo. <laughs> you in agreement? Hmm? Oh, Choo Choo. <laughs> Charles, my brother. Charles, he's thinking right now, huh? You think, give me some time to think about it. What they talking about? Um, he was talking about his, playing he, caroms. He's done. <laughs> he was talking about his decrease at Jerusalem. Um, Moses Decrease. and Elijah. That's what they were having the conversation about. Decrease? Decease. Oh, decease. Ah, there you go. Decease. He's talking about his decease. Him dying to be the Passover lamb in Jerusalem. Right. So where'd you get that information from? Um, Luke um, 9 and 31. There you go. That's it. We put them together. You see? All praises. So verse 4 says... You got it right? All right. Verse 4 says, Then answered Peter and said unto Yahweh, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. See? But Peter is talking. He ain't, he ain't understanding. <laughs> he said, Look, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles for you, Moses, and Elijah. While he yet spake, so as he's talking, 
Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I well please. Hear ye him. Who is that? That's Jesus. Lord. So why is it a cloud there? All they can do is hear a voice. Because they ain't going to see the similar to the Father. Because no man can see the Father and live. Them them classes, put them together. So the Most High had to correct who? Peter? Yeah. No. He's, this is my beloved son in whom I well please. Hear ye him. See? Peter, they ain't confused about this, brother. They tremble. Watch this, verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, what did they hear? His voice. They heard the they voice. Heard his voice. Whose voice? The most, most high. high. Right. So the most high confirmed and said, who we need to hear? Christ. 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 That's it. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and was what? Afraid. afraid. So afraid. What so afraid mean? They trembled. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, see? So there's no no man heard the voice at any time. Wait a minute. So we have to slow down and get understanding. Right? Okay. Verse 7. And Yahushai came and touched him and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no, no man save who? Yahushai only. Why is that? Because the most I just told him. Here you am. <laughs> this is the one you listen to. You see? He gonna give you the doctrine. <laughs> so their eyes are supposed to be focused on Yahweh Shai only. That's how our eyes are supposed to be focused on Yahweh Shai only. See? Verse 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahushai charged them, mean gave them a strict order, saying, Tell the what? Tell the vision. The vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Hey. So would Christ die and resurrect? Yes, he would. He believed that and it happened. So that that all that time before Christ's death and all that, they couldn't say nothing about what they seen. Those three had to keep it to themselves. See that? Until when? Until his resurrection. Right. So now, did Peter speak on this? Yep. Yeah. Second Peter. So we got to get it. Second Peter. So now the information will come out to the church about what Peter, James, and John actually witnessed, seen, heard. Second Peter, right? Yep. Chapter one. Chapter one. Chapter Second Peter one. Yeah. And thirteen. So yeah, I think it me. As long as I am in this tabernacle, so Peter's talking about his body. He's calling his body a tabernacle. Second Peter, chapter one, verse thirteen. Verse 13, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So Peter always wanted, as while he was alive, he always wanted to stir up Israel's mind. Keep them fired up. Because he knew Christ would come back one day. That's the third chapter, right? That's right. Verse 14, knowing that surely I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord, Yahushai the Christ, have showed me. So what did Christ show, let Peter know? That he was going to have to what? He was going to have to pass on. He going to sleep. He would die. So remember what Christ said in Matthew 16? There be some of you standing here 
that should not taste death till you see the Son of Man come. Right? In his glory. In his glory. So Peter, James, and John saw that, right? They see in the 17th it. chapter. So would Peter them taste death after that? Yes. <laughs> He's saying it. <laughs> you understand? Verse 15. More I will endeavor that ye may be able after my what? Decease. Mm. That that word go again. So will Peter die? Yes. So when is Peter, James, and John going to be rewarded? When Christ returns. And Christ's second coming. What are they going to be rewarded with? Immortality. So there's no, okay, Peter, James, and John are going to be resurrected, and you got wicked Israelites, righteous Israelites, Peter along with them, they ain't some wilderness. Where? Where is this supposed wilderness at? South America, Brazil, the Amazon. And Peter and them got to sit in the wilderness with other, come on, man. Right with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the mother and the seven sons, they sitting there like, are you serious? That ain't <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> so he said, More I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Lies. Lies, false doctrines, false teachings. What are these false teachings? They're cunningly devised. So Satan knows how to cunningly devise things, lies, and whatever these lies are believable. So who are we to listen to? Christ. Christ. And Christ will be speaking through his apostles. <laughs> That's why we got the book. And man gonna pay lest they repent. Hey, sit here and talk smack and junk. All oh, y'all Christ. All oh, this, this, and that. Okay? You have to answer to Christ when he show up. <laughs> and philosophies and witchcraft don't work with Christ. Ah, oh, I didn't know the thousand of these. That don't work. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Oh, I know. I, I, I got that. Why? How, how, that don't work. Some Hebrew. That stuff ain't working with Christ. <laughs> We're gonna be judged off what did we follow Christ? Did we follow keep them commandments through Christ? That was Solomon said, right? In Ecclesiastes. Was that the 12th chapter? The 12th chapter. Say, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's the simplicity of Christ, right there. Keep it simple. <laughs> right there. Let's read on. He said, we have not follow, followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power of and what? Coming. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ showed it to them. So they in turn will go and teach the rest of Israel in the church. See? That's why it's coming out to us today. Same gospel. <laughs> then cometh what? The end. Because the gospel shall be preached, then the end shall come. That's it. But we were eyewitnesses of his what? Majesty. So what did Peter, James, and John see on that high mountain? Christ is what? Majesty. Oh, how he's going to look at his second coming. This is not something cunningly devised and it's a lie. Nah, they speaking the truth. They said, Peter said, we ain't seen it. We've seen him change. Before our eyes, we've seen his majesty. Verse 17. For he received from what? God the Father. Why is Peter telling the truth? Why is he saying God the Father? Why do they always, the apostles always say God the Father? And Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> he knows they're two separate. 
That's yes. that's real talk. <laughs> that's it. There it is right there. So we supposed to be talking like them. But we got caught up in the devil tricks and we started talking like the devil. That's what Satan wants. Speak like me. <laughs> See? So we say what the Bible says. For he received. Mm. Go ahead, brother. A question about when it's in verse 16. When it's at the last end, it says, But we were witnesses for his, for his majesty. Uh. Of his majesty. I know Matthew 17 and 5, but also to Revelation chapter 1. He did the same thing with John Revelator. I don't know why I read I don't know why I wrote that down in my Bible. What is what what event is we're talking about Matthew 17 and 5. That's that's the event he's talking about, yeah. So uh, Revelation 1 wouldn't be a bit. He no. Peter's talking about what they witnessed. Mm -hmm. So we just stay there. Right. Now you want to get into the color of Christ and all that. Did you go to Revelation 1? He, but, he, but he was an eyewitness, so no, never mind. I was confused myself again. Peter, so, James, that's it's John. It's the same yeah. John. But this is talking about uh, that okay. event. All right, all right. Okay. You see? So we'll read it. Verse 17. Yeah. For he received. So when you receive something, who you receive, you got to be receiving it from somebody else, yeah. right? Yeah. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. Mm. When there came such a voice to him, to him, from the excellent glory. Who is that? The Most High. The Most High. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So if they was there, witnesses, and heard the voice, who we supposed to believe? The apostles. The apostles. Mm -hmm. They were eyewitnesses, right, mm -hmm. of Christ changing before they eye and hearing a voice. That's the Father. They, <laughs> see? Giving honor to his son. So we stay with that. That's why we're going. We know what we're talking about, the second coming of Christ in his glory. See? These are the scriptures. That's what the apostles taught. So we got to believe in what they taught. You understand? Hold that, get Thessalonians. Real quick. Make sure I'm... Yeah, 2 Thessalon Thessalonians, sorry. 2 Thessalonians 1. In seven. Second Thessalonians one and, and seven. It says, And you who are troubled, rest with us. When is this rest coming? When the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. What is Paul telling, talking about here to the Israelites in Thessalonica? There's another one. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. See that? So we got to get to know the Father. How do we get to learn of the Father? With the Son. Son. <laughs> and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to be obedient to the teachings, obedient to the gospel. So we have to learn the gospel first, and all praises, that's what we learn in the gospel. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come, see that? To be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that what? Believe. Believe. Because our testimony, meaning the apostles' testimony, among you was what? Believe. Believe in that day. What day ta they talk Paul talking about? Judgment. Judgment. Judgment day. So are we supposed to believe their testimony, the apostles' testimony? Yeah. All right. We start talking different from them, then we ain't believing in what they teach. See? So this this is a serious topic. 
So it's back to 2 Peter 1. In 18. It says, and this voice which came from where? It says, from heaven. We have 2 Peter 1 and 18. So those when Christ would always walk, he always give the location of his father. He would tell Peter, well, who do men say that I am? And Peter was like, hey, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, it's one of the old prophets. Said, who you say I am? So you, you I was shy. The Christ, the Son of God, say flesh and blood is not revealed it unto you, but my Father, which is where? In heaven. He kept letting them know the location of his Father. We missed that, for a lot of us missed that point. So let's read on. 18 verse, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, where until you do well that you take heed. So we supposed to listen to the apostles. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day and the day star rise in your heart. So who shall we hear? This is what Peter said. Who are we to listen to? Them have a more sure word of prophecy, right? Because they I they was eyewitnesses right. of Christ, seeing his, his majesty and glory, right? Right. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, now he's gonna talk about the holy scriptures, is of is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So you had Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. It was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High Christ moving these men to write and record down what they were taught. See? That's what the brothers is teaching. Even though man come up against the book, that book, okay? <laughs> oh man, y'all believe in some, some deity and this, this, y'all crazy, okay? Keep talking. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> so it, it was the most high who is the author, right, of this, man. He inspired them holy scriptures, brother. That's right. Talking about this, the white man's book. No, it's not. <laughs> That's the white man's spirit. Prove it. And they can't. And a lot of our people into Egyptology and all this stuff. Worshiping many gods. No, we don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> Cut it out. You didn't talk. You didn't, first, you didn't say the woman is the goddess. That's strike one. Strike two, who is Ra? Egyptian God. Okay, the sun god. That's two gods right there. False gods at that. Ra couldn't help you when the Lord hit, hit the Egyptians with that darkness. Right. <laughs> what was Ra? <Ryan>? Yeah, <laughs> See? So we got we gotta cut it out and repent, man. We always trying to come up against the book. Had holy men that were used by the Lord to record these scriptures. So let's go to Second Ezra in the Apocrypha. Through the point. With this this book here called the Apocrypha, Apocrypha can be found in the 1611 edition of the King James. So this Second Ezra 14. Since we're talking about the Holy Spirit moving holy men. So this second Ezra is 14 and 17. This is the angel Uriel talking to Ezra. It says, for, for look how much the world shall be weaker through age. So while this world is aging, right? Right. 
so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. So look how much evil is on this earth. From the time, we say, let's say from the time of Ezra to now, you got different forms of murder, different forms of robbery. You got men and women smoking plants. <laughs> right? You got men, yeah. Men and women getting sex changes. You see, you see that? Straight wickedness. Wicked inventions. You got battery operated sex toys. Straight wickedness. See? So has, has sin increased? Yeah. Now, now that they come out of the closet, being a, it's the thing to be a sodomite. It's glorified. They get, deal with parades, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Verse 18 says, For the truth is fled far away, and leasing is hard at hand. So, what does leasing mean? If the angels say that the, the, the truth is fled far away from man, then what is man dealing with? Falsehood. Falsehood. That's what leasing is. So a lot of our people are caught up in falsehood. See, lies. L love the living of lies. It said, For now hasted the vision to come which thou hast seen. So Ezra was seeing visions. And the angel said, that vision, this hastening, it's going to come to pass. So let's get, let's get it. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra. Second Ezra's 11. 2nd Ezra's 11th chapter. The angel said, now hasted the vision which thou hast seen. In 36. 2nd Ezra 11, 36. Then I heard a voice which said unto me, Look before thee and consider the thing that thou seest. So Ezra's hearing this voice, and this voice is telling him, Look before thee and consider what you're looking at. And I beheld, and lo, as it was a roar, as a roaring lion chased out of the wood. So what did Ezra see? He sees a roaring lion. That's right. It's coming running out of the wood. Roaring. Who is this, Satan? No. Okay, so <laughs> let's read on. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle. So this lion is roaring at an eagle. And said, so this is what the lion is saying. Hear thou, I will talk with thee. And the highest shall say unto thee, Thou art it, meaning this eagle, that remainest of the what? Four beasts. Right. So who are these four beasts? Name the four beasts. Go ahead. Persian and Persian and Medes. You have to speak up. They don't think they can hear you. What was the first empire that ruled? It was the Persians and the Babylonians. Okay. Persian and Medes, the Greeks, and the Romans. Right. So what animal did you, in Daniel was the Babylonians? The Babylonians. I think it was a bear. The lion. The lion. Okay. The Persian and the Medes was the what? You just that. said it. Oh, a bear. And then the Greeks, the third was what? Who said it? A leopard. A leopard. Okay. What about the fourth? Eagle. But Daniel didn't say that. Said that. Because <laughs> Daniel, that, that animal wasn't given to him. So where are we getting that, the, the, the picture now of the animal? Right. On the prophet Ezra. No, nah, use the scripture. The Lord will fight for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right here. That's right there. The eagle. That's why this man, you know, he always exalt the eagle. That's one of his symbols. You see? So remember, the lion is roaring at the eagle. Say, art thou now it that remaineth of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my, in my world? 
that the end of their times might come through them. See? So only before ruling empires. The last one being the eagle. And we're talking about the end times. When the eagle will rule, right? Yeah. Wouldn't we read all that? That Christ will die and suffer in the end of the world? Yeah. Well, the scriptures in 2 Ezra, the 6th chapter, say who is the end of the world? Esau. Esau. Okay. So it ain't, it ain't no era. Okay, cut that out. The one that's saying Arab and all, Esau, the Arab and all, they ain't going here. But they'll go to Jubilees, they'll go all over the other place, everywhere. <laughs> Book of Barnabas, Book of Judas, Book of Enoch, all these books everywhere. Confused. See? Ben Yehuda, yeah. Leave Ben Yehuda alone. The rabbi. <laughs> Uh, these books is made up by Edomites, man. Go ahead, brother. Uh, I used to think the eagle was America because the, um, the America represent the eagle. Like, you know, the little image of the eagle. Like That's what you used to think? Or you too. still think that? That's what uh, you used to, you still think that or? No, nah, I don't think it no more, but at the, with the, the scripture slapping. Right. You know? <laughs> America's a part of the eagle. Okay. See, because the Roman, remember the Roman Empire, that's the eagle. Yeah. All this is the Roman Empire. Okay. All right. It's off. Verse 40. So we'll keep we'll keep getting it. It's saying the fourth came. So what's the fourth? The eagle. The eagle. The fourth empire. The fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed. So this fourth kingdom was surpassed. The Babylonians, right? Persian, the Medes, the Greeks. It said, and had power over the world with great fearfulness. So Edom had his power. Satanic power at that and will govern the earth, man. See. And how would the how would Esau rule with great fearfulness? Come with destruction. Murder. Oppression. Sword. Murder. What you say? Murder. What you say, brother? Said with the sword. Come with the sword. Look what it look what it says. Mm -hmm. Great fearfulness. Great fearfulness and, and over the whole compass of the earth. And with much <coughs> wicked oppression. Does that sound like the Arabs? No. The Arabs are going around oppressing everybody throughout the earth? No. Only the so-called European has done that. See? Whether it was the British, the Spaniard, right? What'd you say? Portuguese. Portuguese. The United States Calvary. See? This is what we're talking about, Israel. Edom. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get some more. In so long time, dwelt he upon the earth with what? Deceit. 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 What does this so-called European come with? Deceit. 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 Who told you that your Lord and Savior had blue eyes and stringy hair, man? Yeah. Them. And that depiction that they got pushed out there is of, of one of the Borgias families. Right. And that whole family was corrupt and wicked and about incest and fornication. So it's not by coincidence that the Catholic Church and all that get into pedophilia and different types of fornications. Look at the, the idol they serve. So just like you'll see that black image of Christ where he got a cut on his nose. I wonder where that's at in the scriptures. <laughs> a cut on his nose, a fro and frowned up. Now watch the brothers that teach. Ready to fight and frowned up. Why is that? Because look at the idol they got. They came like the idol. See? <laughs> We've been missing it. And this 
phony image of Christ, all infeminate. Check out a lot of men that come out of them churches. Had a, a, infeminate ways about them, right? Soft. Come on, man. <laughs> That's why the Lord said we got to repent from being infeminate. That's in the scriptures, right? Yep. Okay. So, verse 41. For the earth has thou not judged with truth. For thou hast afflicted the meek. So look how the eagle would operate in the end times. For thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Thou hast loved liars. Mm. So you got, you got history called the Trail of Tears. The so-called Indian brothers and sisters was getting, uh, they was being forced to travel in the snow, blizzard. They part of the twelve tribes of Israel. Then you got you, you got you got all these different massacres that Esau came with, right? Trail of Tears, and then they didn't drop bombs on other countries, the atomic bombs. Well, Harisaki and well, Nakata, whatever they call that. Yeah. Foolish. And then they're going to come and get the Japanese and all that reparations. Foolish. So, who is the reign of terror? The so called European. <laughs> so called European, man. That's right. You look that up. Trail of Tears, right? This is another one. Bury me in Wounded Knee. Wounded Knee. The Sand Creek Massacre, airstrikes over in Tulsa, Oklahoma, what they called it, Black Wall Street. Airstrikes, the bombing of church buildings, all this stuff. You think behind 9-11, the one who said 9-11, that's the one that's sitting planes and bombs over there, knocking down buildings. <laughs> the reign of terror. That was hurt the peace of Guys love liars. You ever wonder why pastors they, they get benefits when they they, uh, uh, they ain't taxed when they getting all the money from the people? False pastors are being exalted by who? Okay. Say that was love liars, man. That's why you got all these books out, uh, fictitious books out there running the earth. He's he's all behind, them. right? And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. And has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. So who does this? Who fits this eagle? What nation? Edom. <laughs> All right. What did Isaac say to his two sons? He blessed Jacob with the kingdom of heaven. For Esau, what did he say? He's going to rule the earth by sword. Verse 13, therefore is thy wrongful dealings come up unto the highest and thy pride unto the mighty. The highest also have looked upon the proud times. So what are we living in these last days? Proud times. Proud times, man. A lot of pride. <laughs> See? This is Edom's kingdom. Called proud times. And behold, they are ended. See, it's coming to an end. And his abominations are fulfilled. So this thing gonna be wrapped up. This is what the lion telling his eagle. And therefore appear no more, thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body, that all the earth may be refreshed, meaning renewed. So what is the eagle Doing to the earth then. Destroying. Destroying, Destroying the earth. See? So what group you know running around putting uh uranium and all this and uh, the stuff in the air, mercury wow. in the waters? Destroying the earth. Eat them. So-called European. Lord said he got the, this earth gonna get refreshed. That's right. Renew, right? And may return, meaning come back to his glorious state. Being delivered from thy violence. See? 
and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. So this earth man ready. <laughs> this is what we hear at Edom's King. <laughs> Death, destruction, and noise. <laughs> you think that's what the kingdom of heaven going to be about? No. So let's jump into 12th chapter, the 7th verse. It said, And I said, Lord, that bears rule, if I have found grace before thy sight, and if I am justified with thee before many others, then if my prayer indeed be come up before thy face, comfort me then and show me thy servant the interpretation and plain difference of this fearful vision, that thou mayest perfectly, perfectly comfort my soul. For thou hast judged me worthy to show me the what? The last, last time. time. As we were seeing the end of the world, man. Who we at, bro? <laughs> the 12th chapter. Okay. We at the ninth verse. Now we at 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. Mm. See? Wow. That's heavy. So we didn't, we didn't got Esau. Now we know who you are. <laughs> you the devil. <laughs> Why y'all call him the devil? Because you rule the earth with deceit. You know what devil means? The deceiver. <laughs> now you see. So it says here, verse 12, but it was not expounded unto him. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. So for the sake of time, let's jump down to 31. So we got it right there. We got it. <laughs> All praises to the Most High in Christ. All right. Verse 31. And the lion whom thou sawest rising up out of the wood and roaring and speaking to the eagle and rebuking her for her unrighteousness with all the words which thou hast heard. This is the who? Anointed. Anointed. Who was who that lion represent? Christ. See? So who's set to take out Edom? Christ. Christ. And his second coming. Okay. <laughs> then come at the end, man. See? This is the anointed which the highest, the most high, have kept for who? Them. 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 For them. And for their wickedness unto the what? Them. them. Okay, so Pilate, all of them, they did what they did, they got to pay. Because in Revelation 1, it says, Every eye shall see him, even those which pierced him. So no man gets away from the second coming of Christ. Uh, if Christ come back, we ain't going to be here to see him talking. Every eye going to see Christ. <laughs> That's right. It said, he shall reprove them and upbraid them with their cruelty. For he shall set them before him, what? Alive. Alive. In judgment. In judgment. <laughs> so is the pilot going to be still on sleep? Herod, all the Herod, they're going to be asleep? What about that one Herod that wanted to kill him when he was at his, at, in Matthew 12? Bring him out. Because <laughs> the scriptures say he died. But he got to face judgment day because he was looking for Christ too, right? Christ waiting on, he going to get him also. <laughs> and many of the wicked of Israel. So it, say, it says, and shall rebuke them and correct them. For the rest of my people, in that remnant, shall he deliver with mercy. That's the repentant Israelites. See? Those that have been preserved upon my borders, and he shall make them joyful mm. unto the coming of the day of judgment. Mm. So what does the gospel mean? Good news. Good news. Good tidings. Good tidings. So are we getting this information? Are we getting filled with joy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should. Should. Where have I have spoken unto thee from the beginning? This is the dream that thou sawest, and these are the interpretations. Right? 
So now, let's go to the 13th chapter. Another vision. And it came to pass after seven days. I dreamed a dream by night. So now Ezra will be shown a vision in the nighttime. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. So Ezra saying a mighty wind moving all the waves of the sea. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. So some of you got the King James the 1611. It has a, a what do you call that? Reference. A, a reference. Is it in there? Yeah, what does it say? Uh, about the the thousands of heaven. Well, it says thousands. It says clouds. Clouds of heaven. Clouds of heaven. That's when Christ is coming back with the angels. angels. The clouds of heaven. <laughs> so as we're seeing a man ascend out of the sea, waxing strong with thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. So as this man is looking at the earth, the earth is trembling. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice like as the earth fell when it filleth the fire. Things began to melt. Wasn't Peter talking about some of that melting? That fervent heat. That fervent heat. And after this I beheld and lo, there were gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So now you got a multitude and she couldn't count want to fight this man. So obviously this great multitude didn't believe in this man. They're against this man. <laughs> Verse 6 But I beheld and lo he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or the place where out the hill was graven, I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. Still. They still wanted to fight, even being afraid. And lo, as, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, or held sword, nor any instrument of war. So this man didn't have no worldly instrument, no worldly weapon, see, to fight this great multitude. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, right? And out of his lips, a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. Mm. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. <laughs> when I saw this, I was afraid. So that's another vision as we're seeing all this, right? So what is it? So let's jump to 25. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same, meaning the same man, is he whom God the what? The highest. God the highest, the Father, has kept a great season. Right? So the highest have kept this man back for a long time. That's Christ. Well, let's see which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, the tempest, that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing of in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them, that elect his people, that are upon the earth. Right? So who is the Most High going to use? Christ. We just read it. This man that came out of the sea in the vision. And he shall come to the astonishment 
that dwell on the earth. So this man going to come by, back by surprise. And one shall undertake to fight against another. In one city against another. In one place against another. One people against another. And one realm against another. So this, this is letting us know it will be an uproars of the people. Wars and rumors of wars before Christ came back. This is what Christ referring to when the disciples asked Christ on the Mount of Olives, Tell us when you coming back, right? That sign, that I come. That sign give us the signs that I coming. He was breaking all this down to him, Israel. Go ahead, Does brother. Does this have anything to do with like North Korea and all these wars that keep saying might happen or don't happen? Or That's whatever? right. Okay. All that wars. You got the uh, people fighting against one another. Right. See, race wars, all type of stuff. These are the signs we're looking at, Israel, to let us know that his son about to return. You can't give a date and time. He coming. He come today. <laughs> See? We're supposed to be repenting. See? So it's a good thing we coming together, keep the Sabbath. That's what the commandments say. The Sabbath is a holy convocation. That means we're supposed to gather together, not I'm going to do my own thing. I love the Shabbat. <laughs> really? <laughs> and read them scriptures there. Because love is the keeping of the commandments. We're supposed to gather. And, and, and deal with one doctrine. Right or wrong. Right. That's right. It's only one church. One gospel. <laughs> See? So let's read on. It's saying the time shall be. When these things, these signs, shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before, because he showed Ezra many different signs, how there'd be uproars. We read that, right? Showing them how sin would increase. <clears throat> so he was showing Ezra a lot of stuff. And then shall my what? My son. Be declared. So who was that man ascending in the, in, from the sea in that vision? Son of the Most High, Son of the Highest. That answer. <laughs> then shall my son is my possessive. Yeah, possessive word. See. Then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending, meaning ascending out of the sea. You see. So. The son of the Most High is waiting, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Don't all this go together? Yep. Remember all the <coughs> scriptures that we got today. <laughs> it's all saying the same thing. See? Verse 33, And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in his own land lead the battle that they have one against another. So let's go to show you, you have wars going on. This is the stuff we see today. But when Christ come back, these nations are going to try to fight Christ. That's the point. So will they know when he comes back, these nations? It's telling us. It ain't going to be some secret coming. When nobody knows and he gathers the church and leaves. <laughs> People that left silently. Nah, man. <laughs> that ain't no scripture. We read the scripture. <laughs> See, when he, Christ cracked that sky open, it's on. Right. It's on. And it's letting us know that these nations, they gonna fight. That's what you call Armageddon. See? An innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, 34, as thou sawest them, as you've seen them, as you're in the vision. Willing to come and to overcome him by what? Shaking hands? Fire. See? So all these tanks and all this other stuff they got, this technology, uh -huh. it ain't going to work. <laughs> going to get burnt up. See? But we, we talk Christ love all nations. Does it, does it sound like he love all nations? Nope. 
Christ died for the world. Yeah, that's what John 3, 16 say, but what does it mean? <laughs> world mean world. Well, you got to see world too. He died for that. <laughs> what context are you talking about? Here we go again. Speaking like the devil. Out of context. So let's say verse 35, but he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall come, a great mountain, and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built it like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this my son. So in the, in the law and the prophets, does it talk about a son of God? Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 2. Psalm chapter 2, second after we read about it. It said, this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those who? Nations. Nations. So who was the great multitude that would come to fight against Christ? All nations. All nations. See? It ain't going to be no joke, man, when Christ show up. <laughs> What's their wicked inventions? Tanks and guns. That's it. Hey, satellites and drones, none of that happen. That ain't gonna work, man. Okay, they can have a drone as the size of a spider floating around looking at everybody. <laughs> they ain't working. They gonna pay, man. You watch the documentary, documentary called The Panama Deception. This so-called European was going over there to Panama destroying our people, Panamanians. They also Israelites. And it took over the Panama Canal and all that stuff. Called the Panama Deception. Old documentary. It's cold. It's cold. Brother Rum hit me to that. This was early, I believe, 2000s or something. Early. That, that documentary. Cold. They going to pay, man. They say he was coming with laser guns, brother, splitting up people. Yeah. Disintegrating. Disintegrating. Israelites was disintegrating. Blamed it on Noriega. Hey, wait, go ahead. Blamed it on Noriega. Blamed it on Noriega and stuff, like the brother was saying. Go ahead, Yakir was saying. I'm going to ask you, around what year was that, that Panama session? I'm not, I'm not sure. When did that? That was in the 80s. 80s, no, early Noriega. Early 80s, so. My father was there. Oh, yeah? He was the military police out there when Noriega was doing uh -huh. See? They, they set him up so called. That's from Reagan. Reaganomics. Mm -hmm. They pushing in the, the dope, the drugs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Iran Contra and all that. That's when he started that Star Wars movie. Yeah. Something about some, what if some aliens come visit us from another. You, Reagan, you're going to be brought back to you and Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> See? Witches. Is that, what's, the name oh. of that? What's, what's the name of that documentary? Panama Deception. Panama Destruction? Deception. Deception. Oh, Deception. Who's Deception? Just a comment about oh, okay. Panama. They, they got a book on it too, uh, Economics of a Hitman. Mm. Confessions of a Hitman. Mm. Confessions of a Hitman. Let's see? He, he, he saw me behind all that stuff. We, we always said the wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, man. See? So all that, that stuff, they, they these wicked inventions, technology is not going to work. It's going to get rebuked. <laughs> See? So let's read on. 37. This my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life, mm -hmm. wicked life, see with the, the nations how they live, wicked life, are falling into the tempest. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. Their yeah. evil agendas. So that's why we ain't worried about no new world order. Their agendas and all this. Pa uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, paper clip. Operation Paperclip. And all this. They can name all these little operations they got. It's full of It's going to get destroyed. They can come with their little scientists from Germany that was in the SS. They can come with NASA. <laughs> Christ coming with it, man. <laughs> It says, shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments, wherewith, meaning with torments, 
they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor. It's going to be easy for Christ. By the what? <laughs> law, which is like unto fire. So did Christ do away with God's law? No. That's right. Christ coming with it. The laws of God and the judgment behind it. <laughs> See? That's cold. And then it starts, as you read on your own studies, it's going to get into the deliverance of the ten tribes. That's a whole nother class right there. And we get into Deuteronomy 28. Because a lot of Israelites think Israel is just the, the whole nation is so called Negroes. Looking like Shaft. Yeah. Look, look, they got to look like a certain group, like Shaft and all this other stuff. <laughs> See? But you, we got to get in that history to get these scriptures. We'll see. All praises. We'll see. So what did Ezra see? He seen the second coming of Christ. That's what he seen. And that's why in the 14th chapter, in 18 it says, The truth is fled far away, and least seeming falsehood is hard at hand. For now hasteth the vision to come, which thou hast seen. You see that? Let's read on. Then as I before thee, then answered I before thee and said, Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me and reprove the people which are present. So Ezra's job was to go there to teach Israel that was presently around. But they that shall be born afterward, mean Israel in the future, who shall admonish them? I mean, who shall teach them and warn them? Thus the world is set in darkness, and they that dwell therein are without light. Light. See? When did we start adding second Ezra 14? Uh, 17. Oh, coming back? The, uh, we're in second Ezra 14, right? Right, and then we, uh, 18. Where did we start at? 18. Okay, cool. Okay. So verse 21 say, For thy law is burnt. So who burnt up the laws of God? During this time, it was um, the Babylonians when we saw. That's right. During this time. See? You know so the nation's always burning our scriptures. It wasn't just Hitler. <laughs> and the Babylonians, the Edomites, was burning up us too, putting us on fire and all that. It's in here. See? So these nations got a hatred for us, man. They say, For thy law is burnt. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee, or the works that shall begin. But if I found grace before thee, send the what? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Remember what Peter was talking about? How holy men, right, will be inspired or moved by the Holy Spirit right. to record the prophecies right. and stuff. Ezra being one. Let's see. Send the Holy Spirit into me, and I shall what? Write. Write, Write all, the th all that have been done in the world since the beginning. So can the Lord preserve his word? Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's there, there a scripture right there. Show you. Okay, man can burn the book. <laughs> Lord, look, it's coming back. <laughs> it's going to get and reach who it needs to reach because the gospel got to be preached in all the world, right? Then the end shall come. So this is a special book, Israel. Given to you from the source, the Father. All praises. So you should want to get in it and read it. Meditate. Satan be coming and having them spirits on us. We don't want to read the book. It ain't read until we get to the Sabbath day. Now we the book open. <laughs> what are you doing all week? Playing. Get, get in the scriptures. Make time. We went over that, right? Yeah. <laughs> See? It is a spiritual book. It says, Since the beginning which were written in thy law, that men might find thy path, and that they which will live in the latter days mm. may live. 
So was Ezra thinking about you and I? Yeah. You see? And he knew he would need God's Holy Spirit to inspire him to, to write. So when Israel come to you, say, man wrote that book. I say, okay. But in their mind, they say, white man, white man, white man. Because <laughs> the oppression, you just show them. Let's read on. And it said, he answered me saying, go thy way. Gather the people together, I mean gather Israel together. And say unto them that they seek thee not for 40 days. But look thou, prepare thee many box trees. Where does paper come from? Trees. 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 That's right. And take with thee Sariah, Debriah, Selemiah, Achanas, and Asael, these five which are ready to write swiftly. So that go to show you to the most high, Christ, they be knowing who's who. Yeah. This is the angel. He knew the names of these brothers. <laughs> and saying, Come hither. And I will light a candle of understanding in thy heart, mm. which shall not be put out till the things be performed which thou shalt begin to write. And when thou hast done, some things shall thou publish openly, and some things shall thou show secret, secretly to the wise. See? So something wouldn't be for everybody. See? Then it says, Tomorrow, this hour, thou shalt begin to write. Then went I forth as he commanded and gathered all the people together and said, Hear these words, O Israel. Our fathers at the beginning were strangers in Egypt. From whence they were delivered and received the law of life. Where did we receive the law of life at? Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai. So those commandments are called the law of life for us, man. It's our life source. Which they kept not which he also had transgressed after them. Then was the land, even the land of Zion, parted among you by lot. So after we got the laws at Mount Sinai, eventually we got what? The land. The land parted to us, Under to the Joshua. different tribes, right? Under Joshua, right. But your fathers and ye yourselves have done unrighteousness and have not kept the ways which the highest commanded you. And for as much as he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing that he had given you. So what did the Lord give us and then take away from us in time? The land. The land. We got the boot. This would all go with Deuteronomy 28. Remember he just said we had the land. He was parted unto us. Then what did it say? We didn't keep the commandments in the land. Right. So then in 32, for as much as he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing that he had given you. He had gave us the land. Took it away. Go to Jeremiah 17 and 4. No, this is not talking about nationality. Yeah. <laughs> There's another scripture for that. So this is Jeremiah 17. So it says, I'll read verse 3. O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil, and thy high places. Why? For sin throughout all thy borders. So the Lord let us know during the time of Jeremiah we, we was going to get the boot because of sin. And we would get, our, we would get looted. Our treasures would be given to our enemies. Verse 4, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. So another word for heritage is, is inheritance. So what did the Lord give us that we was going to discontinue from? The land. The land. 
That's the context of that scripture. It's a whole nother class. Somebody read Jeremiah 2 and 7. Because you've got men teaching. This is all this talking about nationality. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Nationality. Now see, the Lord took away our nationality. I U I C. Foolishness. Nah, man. Read that. Jeremiah 2 and 7. 2 and 7. I'll read it. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. So that country, that was the land of Israel. But when ye entered, ye defiled what? My land. My land. And made my what? Heritage an abomination. See? <laughs> Same book. <laughs> so the heritage represent what? The inheritance. The inheritance. The land. The land. See that? That's why he called us his firstborn, because we was at, you know, it was the time when he told Pharaoh to let my firstborn go, so then he could give us the land and inherit the earth, okay. be rulers. Okay. See? Okay. Like Moses. Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees. Chapter 2. One, it says, it is also found in the records that Jeremiah, say Jeremy, the prophet commanded them that were carried away, me into Babylon, to take the fire, as it had been signified, and how that the prophet, having given them the law, charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold or ornaments. We wasn't to go after graven image. Uh, uh, graven images and idols. And with other such speeches exhorted he them that the law should not depart from their hearts. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet, being warned of God, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. So when Moses climbed up to to that, on that mountain, what was it, Mount Nebo? Mount Nebo. What did he see? All the 12 tribes of Israel? He started seeing nationalities. And oh, yeah. <laughs> he saw the land of Israel, the land of Canaan. Yeah, but he used the word heritage right there. See? So what do we get, be getting caught up on a lot of times, Israel, if you notice? Words. The Words. Context. The context. Before they came together, sex. Here we go. Virgin birth. Yeah. That quick. See? So Jeremiah 17 and 4 says, And thou even thyself shall discontinue from the heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. See, so we will go into the Babylonian captivity. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, we shall burn forever. That's how we would need Christ, man. <laughs> See? So the Lord got us, got us up out the land. For breaking his commandments. That's what it's saying in Ezra. So we're back in 2 Ezra 14, right? So Ezra, man, he's he's dealing with Israel. And did the Lord show him many things, deep things, great things, envision. Seeing the second coming of Christ. Look what's being revealed to us, man. It's heavy. We can get ourselves together. So this second Ezra 1432, check it out. And for as much as he, he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing he had given you. What's that? The land. The land. And now you are here in captivity. 
and your brethren among you. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding. That's key. What was Ezra schooling Israel on at that time? What was he top teaching them? To do what? Humble themselves. They have to subdue their own understanding. Let's believe not to their own understanding. What do we get caught up in now? Our own understanding. understanding. We got to subdue it. This has to change. Can't come. We think we know. We Wait a minute. Let me subdue, kill my understanding. <laughs> And let the spirit teach. See? This what has to happen before Christ's second coming. And reform your what? Heart. Heart change. 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 See? So the mind has to change. Where does sin start? In the mind. Here. In the heart. This is why Christ was teaching repentance. This is why he sent the apostles to teach about putting off the old man, putting on the new. He never told, tell, told them to go tell Israel the wicked and the righteous Israel are going to be in some wilderness and then they get a second chance. That, that ain't what. So that means we all could just kick it. We Israel. We ain't got to do nothing. We, we Israel. That doctrine will get us killed. You see? So we can't just be telling Israel anything, man. <laughs> we supposed to lead Israel to Christ. Show them the scriptures. Christ and let it go. Show them the commandments. Boom. We ain't waking nobody up. We thinking that? We already have our own agenda, our own program going on. When Israel out there telling them, we out here to wake up you so-called Negroes and Hispanics. Right there. And proud. <laughs> That's proud talk. See? Because the next thing going to be like, who brought you in the truth? And the next thing after that is, his brother brought me in the truth, man. Back in 1990. Is that right talk? Right no. there? That's, that, that's praising men. They worship. See? So again, Israel, remember, they're seducing spirits <laughs> and devil doctrines, waiting. So he said, he said, reform your hearts. You shall be kept alive. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. mercy. Mm. Remember what Ezra knew about the second coming of Christ. <laughs> For after death mm -hmm. shall the judgment come. Sound familiar? Yes. Do we go with Hebrews 9? Hebrews 9, all up in there. But after death shall the judgment come when we, including Ezra, Ezra, shall live again. What is Ezra talking about? Resurrection. Elect of Israel. What is when we shall live again? What's live again mean? Oh, on. Oh, uh, resurrect the immortality. There you go. See? Ezra them ain't talking about some reincarnation. Because when did you start teaching that, then Ezra in this room or on the street somewhere teaching? Abraham in Brooklyn. King David in Alabama. <laughs> Real, they say that. You see? Where's Ahab at? They don't want to call himself Ahab. <laughs> Saul. <laughs> What's Saul? Oh. <laughs> see? And as they keep talking, putting themselves in the ditch, and then say, this truth ain't for women. Well, you talk about the re uh, reincarnation, and Mary got to be around. The mother and the seven sons got to be around. Lydia, all of them got to be around. It ain't sisters. But you just said the truth ain't for women. What's it again? See? You got to sift it out, Israel. Stay in the scriptures. Keep it facing. You catch them all the, the whole time, man. All praises to the Most High in Christ. 
Say when we shall live again, and then, right, this 35, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. That's judgment day. Right. There it is. Wasn't Christ alluding to this? Yep, Matthew 25. This is when a man gonna get rewarded for his, according to his works. So that's heavy right there. So let's go to Job real quick and get anything. I'll just read this real quick. Job. Job 2 and 1. It said again, there was a day when the sons of God, so in this context here, <laughs> it's talking about the angels, spirits, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So I thought Satan was kicked out of heaven. How is Satan in the presence of the Lord right here? Because Satan got to answer to God, right? Mm -hmm. All right. See that? So this is all the spiritual realm we're reading about right here. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? There's just a question. Where you come from? The Lord already know all things. And Satan answered the Lord. So you don't read about Satan being quiet, I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro under the earth, and in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So right there we could think, he walking up and down under the earth, to and fro under the earth, right? So if that's the case, verse 3, And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him, what? Earth. In, the in the earth. In the earth. So was, was Job underground? No. No. So where does Satan roam at? In the earth. In the earth. That's right. He's the prince of the power of the air. See? A perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. So what did Satan want for Job? Death. Yeah. He wanted the most high to destroy him. What does Satan want the most high to do with us? Destroy us. Destroy, destroy, us. destroy us. See? So he'll come with all them fiery darts, them devil darts, so we can fall for it and get destroyed. See? And we want to play with the devil on this playground. Mm -hmm. verse, verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth now thy hand, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. See? Get him, Lord. Get him some more. And he'll curse you to your face. Verse 6, And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but what? Save his life. So would Satan leave and say, I'm going to kill him anyway? Or would he have to be in obedience to God? We in Job. We didn't want to go to Genesis 16. The sons of God they got kicked out of heaven. Satan was rebellious and so now he's in order. See how we be missing it? Because <laughs> we're in them doctrines, and them doctrines bring confusion. Right. You see? Let's read on. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So was, was Job afflicted in his body? 
Yeah. Yeah. But Satan want Job to curse God. See? Satan had afflicted that sister when she was bent over for a certain amount of time. Long time, man. She couldn't stand up straight, but kept coming to the temple to worship the Most High. The Lord had a specific day. So he's going to heal her through his son. And he had the Pharisees, the wicked of the Pharisees, they didn't, they didn't like that because some doctrine they pushed. You can't heal on the Sabbath, see? I'm going to read on. And he sat down, and he took him a posture to scrape himself withal, with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. So who got into Job's wife? Satan. Satan. See? So Satan moving. See? Trying to get Job to do what? Curse sin. God. Which be a sin. But he, he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. So what did Job do to his wife? Correctly. That's right. That's how I supposed to go. Off is off. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? So Job knows that blessings and adversity comes from the God. You see? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So Satan brought the adversity and affliction on Job while he was where? On earth. 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 Right? This is where mankind goes through adversities and troubles on earth. The third chapter, what did Job wish for? He wished for death. Job 3 and 12. What did Job know about the grave, man? That when you go in the grave and all this, you get troubled by Satan no, again? <laughs> This is heavy. Say, so why this Job 3 and 12? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I should suck? For now, because he was talking about dying. For now should I have lain still and been quiet, me at peace. I should have what? Slept. Slept. Then had I been at rest with kings, meaning kings of the earth, and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves or with princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver or as in hidden untimely birth I had not been as infants which never saw light there the wicked cease from troubling so when man dies right and put in the grave man or woman are they troubled and bothered with adversity affliction no they have rest yeah Yes. While we on earth and alive, we the one, man, it's, oh, we getting hit with Ill, ailments, right? All type of stuff. Said, even the wicked, even they haven't been judged yet, and they still at rest until the second coming when Christ is judged. That's right. See? It say there the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary mean the tired. Be at what? At rest, man. So when people go and pass, it's a sorrowful time. That's the part of the life because of sin. We all praises know about the resurrection, know the reality that you know what? They at rest. We come back. We always had this understanding as a people. We lost it. We start dealing with these other gods, false gods, and following these nations and their customs. Now we're talking about Dante, Inferno, and all this other stuff. Underworld, and Hades, and Fallen Angels. See how we resound? <laughs> Lord say, we professed ourselves to be wise and became fools, man. Lord say, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. If we want to be wise, the Lord say, let us become a what? Fool, that we may be wise. That means we got to set the trap and learn. And see ourselves as simple and foolish. 
we be thinking we're on top of the world, so smart, right? You the dummy. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? Why you didn't do this and that? Do this at that time. They start looking down on others. Proud. Then they flip it on you and say, "You brothers and sisters, y'all think y'all better than people. We ain't said none of that. You saying that? <laughs> See? That that right there. That means that they make assumptions and they're watching you. Every move. So as soon as you make a mistake, ah. See? Now you can walk on eggshells, please. <laughs> Let's read on. Verse 18, there the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the who? Oppressors. Oppressors. So a lot of many of our brothers and sisters went during that hardcore slavery time. They wanted to die, man, because they ain't got to hear the whip. They ain't got to hear the Edomite no more. See? Many of our people, so-called North American Indians and all that, was willing to die. <laughs> so when you when you in the grave and all this stuff, you hearing noises and stuff? Yeah, right. <laughs> you hearing people screaming? <laughs> Verse 19, the small and the great are there. And the servant is free from his master. See? Here's the question. Wherefore is light, meaning sunlight, given unto him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which longeth for death, but it cometh not. See, those in, in, in misery, living in bitterness, they want to they wanna pass on. The Lord say, no, it ain't the time. They be trying to commit suicide, all that. It ain't work. <laughs> you ain't controlling nothing. <laughs> The Lord controls death. It says, which longeth for death, but it cometh not. And dig for it, meaning seek for it, more than for hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they have found a what? Grave. grave. So what, what is Job bringing out about the grave? That it's a place of what? Peace. Rest. Rest. What was he getting attacked at? On earth. On earth, earth. by who? Same, same present. <laughs> the devil. And the devil answers to who? God. So Job had to go through all this adversity. He stayed strong. And in, in the end of it, did he get blessed? Job was being tried. Job is a figure of us, man. We're going to go through it. We just got to hold on to scriptures. Lord giving us the answers is are we listening? Are we listening? Are we going to close the book and go to some other doctrine? And that's what's going to keep confusing us. See? It's all in here for us. Well, that was the point there. Um, just real quick. Dylan, go back. Go to uh, Exodus 3. From last week's class. I just want to correct something that brought to my attention. Just a couple of points. Uh, Exodus 3 and uh, 13. So Exodus 3 and 13, it says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say unto, and they shall say to me, What is thy name? What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. So I just want to make, make sure it's clear that this is talking about the Most High, not Christ. I, got, I had to go back over the video. Some came, it was brought to my attention. It might have been perceived that, just so we can put out there for Israel, that this is not talking about Christ. It's talking about the Most High. 
And then when we go to John 17, correct this one too. In verse 5. It says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So, you know, going back over this, you know, I got to repent for that because I make sure it's brought to my attention we break it down correctly. I think in the video I, I said something to the fact that this glory was talking about the Most High, but it, when it's saying, uh, with the glory which I had with thee, that glory is talking about Christ. So you just want to be clear with that. So brothers and sisters, you know, even though you might be like, oh, but people be hearing it and seeing it, and they can't throw some people off. But another point, since we're going with the glory, uh, going back to that Matthew 17. So are brothers and sisters clear on that? Those two points? That's okay. clear. I want to make sure. Can you elaborate on 17 and 5 one more time? Absolutely. Let's go back there. That's right. <laughs> John 17 Yeah, yeah. And that's why I ask. If anybody's not clear, just ask. You know. So it says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory, see, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So the glory that the glory, that glory that he's talking about is Christ that he had with the Father before the world was, before the world existed. So, is that clear? Yeah, so it's like Christ is asking the Father to give him that glory. Right. Glorify me with the glory that I had with you before the world oh, yeah. was. I got you. Right. And just to add to no what he's saying. Because remember, Christ was with the Father in the beginning, in the beginning right? So Christ knowing he gonna die, this is the night, this the fourteenth day. Okay, it's gonna get morning time. So all this time, you know he gonna die, right? Be put in the grave, be in the grave for uh, three days, three nights, resurrect, and then ascend back to the Father, being glorified at the right hand side. This was his prayer, and it actually happened. So remember, when you go back to Matthew seventeen. And this is kind of going back to lessons that we did, was it three weeks now? Maybe about three weeks ago? In Exodus, the Lord told Moses that what? No man can see my face and live. So people would think in Exodus that's talking about Christ and his glorified state. Right? That's what people would think. That that who was talking to Moses was Jesus Christ. We know according to the scriptures that's the most high, because when you read John, when you read Matthew 17 and 5, I skip 17 and uh now we're we'll starting verse 1 again. It says, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. It says, And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his remnant was white as the light. Raymond. What did I say? Remnant? Yeah. Remnant. 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 Raymond. Raymond. Thank you. What's the point here? Because what are they seeing Christ as? What, are they, what state are they seeing him in? They seeing him in his full glory. What do we see here that they also saw when it came to his full glory? They seen he had Raymond on that Say it again. His face. They saw his face in his full glory. Remember, the Most High told Moses, no man can see my face and live. That was talking about Christ in his glorified state, then something would be wrong with this scripture. When they see in Jesus Christ, they see him in his full glory, like we went over the scriptures. This is what he's going to look like when he returns. From where? Heaven. Wait, what? Second yeah. coming. His second coming. <laughs> He's going to look like this in his second coming. Go to 1 John chapter 3. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Go ahead, Z. Go ahead, Z. 
lost it. This is Christ, not the, this is Christ, right? Period. Yeah. Okay, because I thought I heard in the year wrong that some people think this is the most high. No. People would think that Moses was Christ. Christ was talking to Moses was talking to Christ in Exodus. Okay. Because remember, Christ said, no man has seen the Father at any time and lived, yada, yada. And the people think, well, see, that's talking about Christ back in, in Exodus. No, that's talking about the Most High. Because they're seeing Christ. He showed them his glorified state. See? Just so, them. Go ahead. so just them, though, right? He just showed it to them. Not just to them, though. Because when he come back, guess what? Go to 1 John chapter 3. So they see in the full glory of Christ. In verse 1. 1 John 3 and 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It says, And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. See? Check that out. John is writing saying we the sons of God, but it hasn't been fully shown how they gonna appear and what we shall be. That's why it continues with the statement. It says, but we know, but says, but we know that when he shall appear, who's the he? Right. 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 When he appears a second time, we shall, be like him. we shall be like him. Right? And then it says what? For we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is in his glorified state. Just like Peter, James, and John. Saul in his glorified state. Then, then when you go to uh, Philippians. So, go ahead, give me myself. Back in Exodus, when you went there for four days and four nights, I got the commandments. He dealt with the Most High. He was dealing with the Most High. But he still didn't see his face. He didn't see his face. Remember, in Exodus, he, he, the Lord didn't reveal his full glory on the Moses. What did he see? His backside. He saw his backside. He said, no man can see my face and live. But the disciples, they saw Christ's face in his glorified state, and they what? Live. They live. I was going to say, when it says, uh, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, meaning that we don't know what we're going to be like with our new body, right? Right. Right. Because you can link that up with this scripture we're about to go to, and you can link it up with um, the one we read in 1 Corinthians 15. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians 3 and 20. It says... For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Right. Then it says, Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his what? Glorious body. Glorious body. When you read what's it? Tw uh, twenty. Twenty. We in Philippians three. We read to you. Want me to read twenty again? You want me to read twenty again? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. It says, "For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ." It says, "Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto His what? Glorious, Glorious body." According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So, in these new glory, our bodies is going to be fashioned 
The brothers and who? Sisters. Sisters too. Go get the, because this is corruptible. This stuff right here, it's no good. That's why it dies. It goes, it grows old. See? Lord gonna change our entire appearance when he comes back. Go ahead. Because these bodies are corruptible, they can't enter into us. That's right. We can't go into the kingdom. And these body and those new bodies we're gonna be able to eat too. People, yeah, we ain't gonna be sitting up. We're gonna be eating real food on this earth because Christ told the disciples before he left, when he was at the Passover with him, was that in Luke? Yeah, yeah. Where's that at, Luke? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah. Twenty-two and four. Luke twenty-two and fourteen. Luke 22 and 14, it says, When the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire have I desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Mm -hmm. So the Passover consisted of what? The sacrificial lamb. The sacrificial mm -hmm. lamb. Meat. Mm -hmm. See? It says, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the what? Kingdom. In the kingdom of God. So he wouldn't eat that lamb again until when? The kingdom. Until we enter into the kingdom. We know how we're going to look when we enter into the kingdom. We're going to enter into the kingdom like this? We're going to have glorified bodies when we enter into that kingdom. And in these glorified bodies, we're going to be able to what? Eat and drink. That's why it says and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall what? Come. Come. So what else are we going to be able to do in the kingdom? Drink. Be drinking. Drink. Eating, drinking. The fruit of the vine is what? Wine. Wine. So would the Passover be kept in the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Or is the feast days done away with it? There's a scripture. <laughs> right there. Lord telling us what's happening. And in the we ain't gonna go into it today, but when we get these glorified bodies, your pigment's not gonna change. We're not gonna be walking around here glowing in the dark looking like cocoon. That's not the scriptures. Because people teach that. That your body's gonna be glowing like fire. You're gonna be on fire. What are you talking about? It's a whole, that's why the apostles was like, we don't even know what it's going to be like. But they saw it when Christ's face shine like the sun, he didn't lose his pigmentation. It started glowing like one of these light bulbs. That's not what the scriptures are saying. Because they'll take that scripture in Revelation and say, see, like, like brass that was burned in a furnace. You ever seen brass burned? And then, you, then they show you videos of the smith with the, with the glowing. That's not, it's not talking about that. When Moses came down from the mountain, because that's one of the scriptures. Let's get that real quick. And I'll finish it. Then we'll finish it off. Maybe to deal with that some other time. Exodus 34. People think we get these glorified bodies because see what they want to do? They want to deny the color of Christ. Because they're in love with the white man. They love what he saw. Anything to deny Christ being a color? We're not saying Christ is a black man, he's an African. No. We just know Christ is a man of color. That's it. Just like the rest of Israel. So when it's talking about glorified states, our appearances and our bodies is going to change, but we'll still have color. We ain't going to all just be looking like gold walking around here. Exodus 34. And uh, 29, somebody read that. Exodus 34 and 29. It says that it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, 
with two tables, with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face showed. The what? That the skin of his face showed. Uh huh. While he talked with him. So Moses came down from Mount Sinai. What was what was lit up? His face. His face, but what else? His what? His skin was, because he came from the presence of the Most High, his skin was shining. It was beaming. It didn't say he, oh, and Moses lost his pigmentation and he just started glowing. No. His skin, that we have skin, it was showing, it was shining. Go ahead. Verse 30. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face showed. And they were afraid to come nigh him. Go ahead. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh. And he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So his skin was shining so bright they had to, he had to put a what? A veil on his face. They, he was so bright they had to put a veil on his face. Think about that. His skin was shining so bright, not that they could just behold him and look at him. They had to put they had to put a veil over his face. And this represented something else too. But go ahead. It says. It says, but verse 34. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. So that's just a, a small example of what's to come. See? If we saw Christ in his glorified state, and his face and his everything, his garments was shining like the sun, it's a whole new thing that the Lord gonna do for us when he returns. We're gonna appear like Christ in his glory. That's gonna be something to behold. So right. Um, we gotta do the chameleon. But we went over that uh what is it with Genesis 34 and said um Jacob he wrestled the angel and he said I've seen God face face to face, to face. so you can't we can't take it out of context and say well Moses would say Moses seen the most high face as though they talking straight hit together straight up where he actually seeing how what he looks like that's what we went there in Exodus uh, 33 mm -hmm. he's seen the most high's glory part of it not all of it so that's an Ecclesiastes, because I get it to give it to you. To go with what we read last was it last week, right? A couple, a couple of weeks. Ecclesiasticus 45. And one, it says, he brought him out, he brought, and he brought out of him. Yeah, out of Jacob, a merciful man, this is speaking about Moses, which found favor in the sight of all flesh, even Moses, beloved of God, I mean, beloved of the Most High, and men, whose memorial is blessed. He made him like to the glorious saints and magnified him so that his enemies stood in fear of him. By his words, he caused the, one, caused the wonders to cease. Talking about Lord use Moses, Right? When he's dealing with the, uh, the Lord's hidden Egypt with those ten plagues. It said, by his words he caused the wonders to cease, and he made him glorious in the sight of kings, and gave him a commandment for his people, and showed him what? Part of his glory. See? Mm. So who was Moses dealing with? Most the most high. high. But he never, Moses could never see the most high face straight up like that. No, only Christ can. You see. And that's the point. Who could teach us, show us the Father better than any man? Christ. Christ. 
That's why the Father say, Hear ye him. So we went there in 17, the powerful chapter. That was the most highest voice. Telling Peter him, Hear ye him. Peter actually brought that out in, in, in his epistle. So there's no getting around that. See, we got the answers. We got it. See, man like to use these little trick word semantics. He emptied himself. Where's that at? <laughs> See, the Most High emptied himself. Yeah. Oh, he took a part of himself and made Jesus Christ. Look, man. Like he took the real. Yeah. Me. Christ over here talking to himself. Come on, man. <laughs> so we've got many accounts of this voice being heard outside of Christ. But why do you think Catholicism is the most powerful religion on the face of the earth? Because they backed by the devil. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, brother. Now, who runs the Catholic Church? Israel? Edom. You got your answer. Who Edom is? We got to keep stressing that. A lot of people don't want Master to go into captivity. Or get judged. Or speak evil. Just speak it. evil of us. Listen, and by the way, he's not white. There's no such thing as black. And here go Israel. No, I just see some black people. <laughs> Cut that out, man. <laughs> Cut that out. See? Light brown, dark brown. See, but but he's white. The T our T shirts is white, man. Our teeth. Teeth is white. Come it's on, brother. But well, why is he saying he's the white man, you the black man? What is he what is he saying? what is he saying? He's saying he's pure, you're evil, you're dark. That's all he's saying. <laughs> it rolls we come with this like, so deep, man. See the penny? Today ain't like uh Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln, he's turned his face turned to see that? Ooh. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln right with the rest of them. Eat a mic. Deep. Oh man, you see him pull white white ball, so you gotta knock the black ball in. Let racing Israel, we gotta repent. <laughs> <laughs> Get so deep. Devil's food. <laughs> Angel's food. All right. Wait. <laughs> so we we still be looking for them scriptures people be talking about. We looking for December twenty fifth. We looking for the apple, the Easter bunny, the Easter bunny, the pitchfork, the rib that made Eve. Who wanna yeah, the rib that made exactly the, the snake. Who wanna see what <laughs> Satan was a, a angel that was beautiful, had wings, played the harp, and he played music. <laughs> Israel. Go to Ezekiel 28, I got you. Please no. cut that out. <laughs> Rather than, than Isaiah 28. Four, Isaiah 14. <laughs> what that is is mainstream religion to come with Satanism. That's all. In the beginning of Genesis, you read about Lucifer in Genesis. That's a question before we break bread. It ain't there. You yeah, read the word. <laughs> right. What you read in Genesis, in the beginning? The serpent. Serpent. Not snake. <laughs> hey, real quick, just when you read that, he's, uh, Isaiah 14. Yeah. When you, talk, when you read about Lucifer, where that, where that come, it has nothing to do with Satan <laughs> at all. When you, read the, when you read the scriptures, it's talking about who? Simon. Who do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Who is Lucifer talking about? If if if, if brothers and sisters, brothers gonna talk about the king of Babylon. Oh no, I was thinking of uh, Ezekiel twenty nine. So it's talking about the king of king of Babylon. Lucifer just means son of the morning. That's it. Because what they did, that's a translation from the Latin. You read in the you read it. I'm not gonna get too much. You read in the Latin Bible, 
it just says Son of the Morning. They couldn't translate Lucifer, or they couldn't translate Son of the Morning, so they put Lucifer there. That's all it means. It has nothing to do with Satan. It's just the title, Son of the Morning. Because who else is called the Son of the Morning? Christ. Christ. So is Christ Lucifer now? No, it's just a name. It has nothing to do with Satan, the devil, a TV show, none of that stuff. That's to, that's to scare people into what? Religion. It's that devil doctrine again. People still think, yeah. Lucifer. Jay-Z said it. Lucy, he made Lucifer son. See, that Jay-Z, the Illuminati. It's, it's commercialism. That's all. It ain't got nothing to do with Satan at all. Neither does Ezekiel 29. So. All right, Israel. So with that, we say all praise to the most high.